Watamoli, Watamoli, hello, greetings. Nieta Marayanyi, my name is Marawa. Um, Kulin Bama Mari, Nienta Natani Narinaya. So, to the people of the Kulin Nations, you're welcome on my country. Thank you for having me here. Um, hard act to follow, so much passion, so much power. Um, and until about two minutes ago, I hadn't finished writing what is an attempt at a speech. I've just got some notes. Um, but I'm going to take it slow. And the reason being is um, the subject for this morning is hope and resistance. Um, I think hope simplifies it a little bit too much. There has to be drive, there has to be determination. You need to be fighting for something. It's about justice. Um, and so, before I move any further, I want to acknowledge everything that my big sister Candy said. Um, and just maybe add my little piece to it as well. Um, Environmental destruction is gender violence. It's that simple. Most of the world has, uh, most of the world's people have gendered the earth to be a woman, to be feminine, to be femme. And so when we talk about environmental destruction, we're talking about the ripping a part of the sacredness of the woman and what that means and bringing it back to water is life. We say, and I've heard this said in other places as well, the womb is the first country. Um, our, when we talk about who we are as First Nations people of this continent, we talk about what country we come from, which language we speak and who we're related to. Um, and that all starts in the water. The womb is the first country, the water is the first country. Um, my notes are a bit all over the place, um, but I just want to tell you a little bit about where I'm from as well. So when we talk about hope, and I was saying we, talk, we need to be fighting for something, we need to be striving for justice. Hope is about reaching for something better, but taking action to make that something better happen as well. Um, people always ask me where did my fight come from? And I say I come from a long line of warriors, defenders, people who have never ever surrendered, people who have never ever given in. We've always said that we're the first people from our country and until everyone, last one of us is gone, we will remain. We continue to fight every single day. I think a lot of how I was raised um, was there are many survival tactics that our people use. Some use assimilation, um, some continue to fight, um, some talk about sovereignty every single day. The tactic that my family used was when we came up against racism and bigotry, when we were the only Aboriginal people living in a small country town that um, commonly um, referred to us as the town niggers, um, to survive that sort of racism, the response that my family um, took and the, I guess, survival tactic that we used was to double down on our blackness, is to be stronger, double down on our indigeneity, to, to keep the essence of who we are in our, in our soul and in our centre and in our core, and that is what our shield is. That is what protects us. If we didn't use that, and if we haven't remained the first people from that country, then we would no longer exist. Um, another thing that um, I want to talk about is that environmental destruction is the business of colonization. And um, in terms of decolonizing and the solution to how we fight and come out of the, the troubles that we're up against, um, I was very lucky to have parents, two very strong Aboriginal parents. They're a little bit crazy, they're very warmer, but I love them and they love me. Um, 
is that until the age of five, when I went to preschool, um, there was no, um, I guess, I guess, sort of um, significant role, someone who played a significant role in my family who was a, was a white person. Um, it was until I had a white preschool teacher that I'd only been in interaction with Aboriginal people. And I'm talking about the East Coast here, and it is possible and that has happened. And I think that's a little bit of what shaped me. But just to give people a little bit of background about where my blackness comes from. Um, so in relation to Sister Candy's talk, um, we're talking about saying no and fighting and making that no mean something. Um, and when we talk about environmental destruction being gender violence, it's also rape culture. And it's the business of colonization to either exterminate the First Nations people who say that they speak for country, who say that they hold the power of consent, or um, to do whatever they can to manipulate a process to create this veneer of consent. Um, and in the case of fighting the Adani Carmichael coal mine, obviously I'm a spokesperson for the Wangana Jagalingu Family Council. Um, we've said no three times. Um, but Adani is that really creepy, extra drunk, violent guy at the bar who just can't take a hint. Um, and he keeps coming back. And this is the reality of the situation that we're in, is that there is no cap on how many times um, they can come back to us and force us into negotiations. But in 2014, when our people came together to say no to Adani for the second time, um, we took that as our mandate to go and fight um, and to have that no respected, to, me to demand that it be respected. So just going to play a little bit of um, a video about the essence of what the Wangana Jagalingu fight against the Adani Carmichael coal mine is, and that is that no means no. So cue the video. We come from the dreaming. We come from the beginning of time, from the water spirit, which gave us life, the creator, which gave us everything. We are only here because of that. And we are here surviving on this planet, on this continent now, because we are Aboriginal people connected to that land. Once that land's gone, once it's destroyed, there's nothing. We will cease to exist. 18 months ago, our people came together and said no to mining giant Adani. They want to dig up the Carmichael the biggest coal mine in Australian history, on our country. We told them we will not let them take away our rights and destroy our land, and to take their shut up money and go home. They didn't listen. So in March 2015, we launched our public campaign to defend our traditional homelands from Adani's destruction. Our people have organised, we've rallied, we've joined together to let the world know about the fight that we have here in Australia and in Queensland and the tremendous task that it is to take on a mining company when we know that the legislation in this country is stacked against us. We took our fight to the community, to the media, to the parliament. We alerted the UN to the trampling of our rights. Over 100,000 people stood with us. Our supporters helped us to travel to the boardrooms of the world's biggest banks so we could get the message to them in person that we do not consent to this devastating mine and that it's bad investment and that they should not fund it. Many banks ruled out supporting Adani. We met with Standard Chartered. They came out and said publicly they will no longer be funding Adani or any part of the Carmichael. We also met with First Nations people who share our struggle. They now stand strong with us. We know the disastrous effects the release of this carbon from the Carmichael mine would have on a global scale. In the federal court, we exposed the Dani's lies about jobs and benefits and their disregard for us as people and for the things we hold sacred and dear. We showed how the native title tribunal was duped by these lies and ran roughshod over our rights. But the Dani are relentless bullies and are supported by the Queensland and federal governments. Today, they are still pushing to go ahead and destroy our homelands with their coal mine. They will stop our dreaming. Where will the song go? What will the song be? There'll be nothing left. We're showing up, we're stepping up, we're taking on the fight. The last 18 months has been the biggest fight of our lives. We are still here, and no still means no. 
Now is the time for us to stand stronger than ever, to step up to the fight. We are protecting Wangan and Jagalingo country from irreversible destruction, from complete devastation. We will continue to fight against the Adani Carmichael mine. Let's stay strong so that Adani and our governments finally understand when we say no, we mean no. Thank you. Thank you. So I guess that's a little bit of our three-year story compacted as tightly as we can in three and a half minutes. Um, and I had someone come up to me the other week. I was at um, the Community Organising Fellowship and we had some guests come in and someone come up, came up to me and said, um, nothing is stacking up. Nothing is stacking up. Nothing is making any sense. You've said no. General Australian public is saying no. Um, what is it? Why do they keep pushing ahead? And when you look to places like Standing Rock, um, it's very, very obvious about what the answer is. The answer, and this is the truth, is that there is an unresolved tension between the colonial settler society and First Nations people. It's unfinished business. It's not over. We can't move forward unless we, it's not just about acknowledging our history, it's about actually changing some shit. Um, what we're seeing right now, what we're seeing right now is the reenacting of that first frontier violence, that first frontier struggle. It's a power struggle where we have foreign forces coming in putting up their new laws, saying we now own this, um, dehumanising us, saying that we have no claim to what has been ours since time began. Um, when it comes down to what is actually stopping the Adani Carmichael coal mine, it's the Wangan and Jagalingu Family Council. And I said this to this person a few weeks ago who asked me about, you know, what is it? I don't understand it, it's not making any sense to me. It is this, the Wangan and Jagalingu Family Council put Adani on the map. We made them the issue. We made them an issue when we said no. It's the business of colonization to do environmental damage. Think about that. It is the business of colonization to do environmental da damage. When we said no, we're challenging their ability, their license even, to go ahead and continue to colonize, um, to take over and destroy our country, to poison our sacred water source, our springs and the life of our country. We believe in the Kamukama Yunji, which is the great water spirit. That is our dreaming, that's, how, that's where we come from, that's where time began for us, and that is what our identity is. So I was trying to explain to this person, um, when we said no, Adani became an issue because it wasn't business as usual. It wasn't colonization as usual. We didn't allow them to just go and dig up our country and destroy it, dig up our old people and destroy it, to destroy our water source. Um, it was from that moment that we said no that the real, the real fight began. And we drew a line and we said, no more. For those people who want to stand and want to fight with us, um, stand alongside with us, we want you to really be with us. So just like the way you work for a career, we need you to work to create the world that you want to live in. If you want to live in a world that's free of racism, bigotry, Islamophobia, sexism, um, homophobia, then you need to, every single day, work to create that world. 
We're doing it every single day. We're working to protect who we are and deciding what future um, we want to have for our people. That is what self-determination is. I put it on everyone in the audience to, who are you? Who are you in your sovereign self? And it's up to you to determine what future you want to live in. It's amazing having everyone here and talking about, you know, we want to build this great sort of, this, this future, avoiding the climate crisis and avoiding the violence that's yet to come. But are you actually willing to put in the work, to do the work? It's not just showing up to rallies. It's not just signing petitions. It's working the way you work to have the career you want, the future you want. You need to build that world as well. And so if you want to support the Wangana Jagalingu Family Council, who are the final line stopping the Adani Carmichael coal mine, um, you need to acknowledge that we can't have people standing with us who don't accept the colonial history and don't accept that from the moment we're born, every single one of us is conditioned. From the moment we come out of that first country, we're conditioned. We're conditioned to accept gender violence on our mother earth, what is sacred, the spirit, the water. And so, back to hope. Um, for some people, because you can, you should. Um, for us, it's the fight that went before us that meant that we could survive, that meant that we're here, um, that meant that we're, we still have a voice, we're still intact as a people, and that is our can, that is our can. And so, but if we want a future, because we can, we have to. Um, that's what I have to say about hope. Um, for our, for our people, it's about, it's more than just hope, it's about justice. There has been atrocious crimes that have been committed against our people, and it's about not letting those, the trauma from those crimes continue on, um, and that pain to continue to exist. There needs to be justice. When we're talking about what happened on Thursday and Friday, um, in relation to our brother Elijah, there needs to be justice. Um, black bodies, indigenous bodies are on the front line and it is in losing our people that the people who speak for country and hold that consent and decide whether to give it or to withhold it, um, it's, it's in that situation when our people are wiped out that the importance of the mother, the earth, saying yes or saying no, her consent um, is erased from the equation and the situation. And that's the situation that we're dealing with in Queensland um, and in relation to the Carmichael coal mine. Um, so for a long time we've been saying no means no. Um, and you'd think after three times they would have understood it, but they don't. Um, black ways, when you got kids playing up or someone playing up, you say, no more now, no more. So when I say no means no, I want you to stand and say no more. No means no. No means no. No means no. This is it, this is the line in the sand. Um, we're standing here, we protect our country and we, um, we stand in that no decision and we're continuing to fight to have that respected. No means no.